This is a short review of the IKeyLogic ScanLogic 2 Logic Analyzer. First, what is a logic analyzer? It's basically a tool that helps you debug digital signals, for instance, I squared C, serial UART, SPI, one wire bus. Uh, you can even look at PWM signals or the pulse signal that's used to control RC servos. What makes this great for a hobbyist is that at an $80 US price point and 59 euros, uh, it's a whole lot cheaper option for debugging these high speed signals over an oscilloscope. Now, it differs from an oscilloscope in that it can't read analog values, so it couldn't show you a sine wave or noise on a signal line. All it can read is on or off, but it does that at very high speeds. Uh, this one goes up to 20 million samples per second across all four lines and can store up to 256K on each line, and I think it can read down from 1.8 volts up to 5 volt signal levels. By the way, on their website, they have a guide for making one of these for under $10 in parts. It's based on an ATmega168, which is actually just the chip from an Arduino. Okay, let's look at some quick examples of how you would use a logic analyzer, and this one in particular. So I've got a DSPIC talking to a 16-bit A to D converter over an I2C bus and outputting the data it gets over a serial line. I've got the blue and yellow channel hooked up to my I2C bus that I'm going to analyze. And let's pop over to the software, which is the best part of this product after its price tag. Uh, you just plug in the USB line, no drivers to install or anything, and it, it just works. First thing you do is you set up your capture parameters. Uh, I'm going to pick a sampling rate of 5 million hertz. Uh, you pick your sampling duration and also when to start recording. So I have it set up to start recording after it sees the yellow line go from high to low. So I just hit start and make sure my pick is running. Okay, it's done capturing the data. Now it's sending it back to the PC. Uh, in order for a USB logic analyzer like this to sample so fast, it can't actually send the data back in real time. It has to record it and then transfer back. So depending on how long you want to record, that can last from a few seconds to a minute or two. Okay, we've got the data back here. Let's go over to the decoding tab, select I squared C, and we have to tell it which channel is the clock, which is blue, and which channel is the data, which is yellow. Now I hit decode and it automatically parses the signal. I don't have to go bit by bit like I would on an oscilloscope. So here's my start bit of the I-squared signal and the write address, and it's waiting for the acknowledge bit, but it never comes. And I was actually expecting a few more bytes, and it's pretty easy to see why. I should have been writing to the address 48, not 49. So I'll just quickly hop over here to my MP lab. And that looks a lot better. So you can zoom in and out pretty easily just by scrolling the mouse. If you hold down control, it scrolls a lot faster. And I'll hit the decode button again. And that looks a lot better. So it wrote to 48. They got the acknowledge bit. Uh, it wrote the address of the register I want to read from. And then it read back two bytes. So uh, that's exactly what I wanted to see. OK, now let's see what the serial UART line looks like. I have attached my green probe to the serial output. Go back over to the software. All right, uh, and then I have to turn on the green channel on the display. Just click this button up here. Turn off the yellow and blue. Uh, go back over to decoding. Go over to the UART tab. And one neat feature is this baud rate auto detection. So I just hit that button and it tells me it's 9600 baud rate, which is what I was hoping it would be. And then hit the decode button. And if I zoom in, it actually uh, automatically tells me the ASCII value. The biggest drawback I've found so far with this product is the triggering conditions are fairly simplistic compared to what you find on more sophisticated logic analyzers. Uh, it can only detect a falling or rising or changing edge. It can delay a certain time after it detects that trigger, but it would be very hard to find something in the middle of a long chain of communications. More complex ways to trigger would include things like looking for a certain byte value, counting a certain transitions after that. One feature that helps mitigate the uh, 
lack of triggering options is the ability to highlight certain bytes. So I typed in V here and it automatically highlights that value. So that can help find at least a key sequence in a long chain. Let's do one more example. I've got a PlayStation 2 controller that I want to use to talk to an Arduino. That actually uses an SPI bus. So let me quickly hook up all my probes to that. Okay, I've got my probes hooked up. I'm using Bill Porter's awesome, super easy to use PS2 Arduino library. Just hit play and see what happens. Okay, I've got 250 milliseconds recorded from the start of turning the Arduino on. Uh, we go over to the decoding tab, set up which channel is the clock, uh, chip select, and uh, master in and out data lines, and then hit decode. So one nice thing is that it counts the bytes in the packet. If I zoom in enough here, you can see the first packet is 9 bytes, then 9, then 5. The first thing Bill Porter's code does is initialize the controller and later on, let's see here, 21 bytes long each. So that's all the button states and the analog pressures on the buttons as well as the joystick values. So one neat thing is that I can uh, save this data and then recapture. So I'll unplug the Arduino, hit start, plug the Arduino back in while holding down on one of the buttons. Now I can load the previously saved data onto the same screen. It shows up as white. I can look for differences between what I recorded previously and the new data. And if it doesn't line up, I just grab this little hand tool and just shift things over. Byte happens to be the uh, button state byte. Uh, you can see two of the or one of the bits is different from before, and that is the square button. So some other features are its uh, data generator. Not only can it read in data through its probes, but it can also output. Uh, and you can use pre-recorded data to output. Um, it can generate a PWM that changes over time. FM modulation of data. You can have a serial data file that it outputs. And it'll even do Fourier transforms on recorded data so you can see what the frequency content is. Overall, it's a very inexpensive tool that can help debug lots of digital problems and would be especially useful for people on a budget that don't own an oscilloscope. It doesn't have all the features of the $150 Celie logic, uh, for instance, better triggering, but the intuitive software and price make it a great option.